Good morning and welcome to today's uh, global webinar. Um, we're excited to have Cam Morris, who's the project leader for OS Passfault, with us. And Cam is going to take us through a slide deck. And please, if you have any questions during the uh, webinar, go ahead and type them in the question box or the chat window, and we'll make sure uh, Cam gets them. So without further ado, I will turn things over to Cam. Hello, thank you. I'm really excited to show this. Uh, this is a project I've been working on for quite a while, and uh, a little introduction on myself here. Let's go to this slide. So I work right now at uh, a Department of Defense contractor as a software security specialist, which means I get to be a developer 50% of the time and worry about security and security training the, the rest of the of the time and I, I really enjoy, enjoy that mix. I think it's fun to get into the code and also take care of, uh, take care of the security. So this project, it's a solution for analyzing passwords but it's more than that. I'd like more than anything for people to come away as this could be a password policy replacement. And that's my hope. Um, we're going to talk not so much about why, because I believe that most of the people on this conference, uh, on this uh, watching this, are familiar with the, the pitfalls and the bad things that can happen with password policies. Um, I have here on uh, some of these examples the XKCD uh, example, that cartoon that. Uh, that comic strip here. I'm sure everybody's seen this. It, this explains really well the, the pit, pitfalls of passwords and password policies and how password policies really are not. Um, they're doing, doing more damage than good, really. So um, let's go forward a little bit. So I'm going to skip over some of these reasons why, why uh, password policies and passwords are struggling and how, we, um, how I feel that uh, password um, pass fault can help address some of these. So one of the things is why don't we measure the password strength in these password policies? And part of that is we don't really have a good way to measure password strength. Instead we've been relying on these guidance of um, uppercase character or uppercase uh, a mix of uppercase lowercase special characters numbers and that really does work so this is how passfault works first we identify the patterns that we can find in the password each pattern is measured for its size and by size i mean how many passwords fit in that pattern and then you find the weakest combination of all those passwords. Then we come up with an estimated time to crack. Really the, the combination of the pattern size is the real measure of the password strength, but this estimate uh, time to crack is more for the, um, the lay person, because when you start talking about quintillion number of passwords, they don't really have a, a meaning, a, a good intuitive feel for how large of a password that is. And then finally, we uh, tie the that estimation of, not necessarily the estimation, but then we tie that strength to your password policy. So more in detail, you identify the patterns. And we have a whole bunch of really cool pattern matchers, and we, and we keep getting better as we go along. Different dictionary words. We look for dates. We look for leet speak. So if you've got leet speaks substitution in there, it'll pick up on that. If um, you've got keyboard sequences, which is, are actually really weak, you have a sequence of you know, ASDF or QWERTY, um, those are keyboard patterns where you just put everything in a row on the, on the keyboard. And there's only a very limited number of those available, so they're really weak. But they're really easy to remember and easy to type. So 
we got misspelled words, which is, um, I think, uh, a novel thing. I don't think I've seen that anywhere else. Um, we got dates, we got backwards words, all kinds of patterns that we can look for. So the next step is we measure the pattern size. And this is how many patterns, passwords fit in that pattern. I think this is a much more accurate, more meaningful. Um, a lot of password analysis like how big is my password and password haystacks, you'll see measure the randomness of it. So they measure, um, you know, uppercase, lowercase, special characters, and how many passwords would fit in that pattern. But there's much more patterns than just random. So if you took away all the pattern matching of password and just left random, then you would be equivalent with these um, entropy-based um, password password uh, evaluation that you see out there, like how big is my password, password haystacks. But I love the idea of password haystacks, at least in the, the concept of it's a needle in the haystack, how big is your haystack? Each of these patterns that we find is measuring how large the haystack is. So random is a really large haystack. If you're using dictionary words, that haystack gets a lot smaller. And uh, I wanted to throw in a little thing here. Uh, we always talk about in security the obscurity versus security. Password pattern size, if it's large, that is more security than obscurity. But if you have an obscure pattern, like a backwards, uh, a word spelled backwards, it might be really obscure in that people probably, like crackers, probably don't um, do a lot of backwards words, but the size of it is not large. If they knew that was your pattern, it would be really easy to crack. So at this point, I'd, I'd ask if um, any questions on the pattern size, on how, the, how we find patterns and what the pattern size is. Um, but I'm going to move on. I don't have much interaction here with the crowd. So when we find all these patterns, we find a whole lot more than what actually fits. You can only have so many patterns chained together. So we go through in kind of like a knapsack. It's a knapsack type problem of how can you fit the most in your, your um, knapsack. So we go through all of the different combinations of patterns and find the weakest combination. So we are trying to estimate the, the worst case scenario when a hacker knows what kind of password pattern you've used. So if you've used um, an English word, uh, one of the US cities, that's one of our dictionaries we use. Uh, if you've used a Spanish word, you chain all those three together. Worst case scenario is the hacker knows you've used a Spanish word, a US city name, and an English word how long would it take, what's the size of passwords that fit in that pattern of, of those three patterns combined. Then we estimate the time to crack. Now this can be, this can vary, it depends on how you protect your passwords. If you're using the old school, you know, one or two rounds of SHA-1 or MD5, then this estimate time to crack is going to be really quick. Um, so the time to crack depends on your, the system that's protecting your password. It also depends on what kind of hardware you're using to crack the password. This is assuming an offline attack where you have the hashes from the database already downloaded and um, that helps us uh, estimate your time to crack. And this is where password policy makes a lot more sense because if you know what type of password hash you have and you can estimate what kind of attacker you're going to uh, have attacked you, then you can come up with your own risk analysis and, and that I think is really powerful. So another thing is it gives an intuitive feel for the user. It, it enables a self-training and this was, I had kind of um, suspended work on Passvault for um, about a year, almost six months ago, 
And then I showed this to my father-in-law. He, he asked me, he said, hey, you're a security guy. Um, can you give me some advice on passwords? And I was like, oh, let me tell you. Um, I could go on for an hour. But instead, I, I gave him kind of the, the quick elevator pitch of what this project was, and I showed it to him. He played on that for an hour. And he's a, he's a foot doctor. So I thought, hey, I got a foot doctor. And he was playing it like a game. He, he'd come back to me every 10 minutes like, hey, look at this password. This password is, uh, this can't be cracked in 10 centuries. Isn't that amazing? And then you come back, I got a 100 century password. So I think this is exciting in that um, it, it enables a self-training. People learn quickly what a, a good, strong password is. So, um, oh, I already mentioned this before. We could tie this to the, to the policy, and I think this gives the administrator a better feel for how the strength of his password is across the, not his password, but across his organization. I think it gives you a better chance to manage password risk. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration here. Let's come over to my browser and so here's the GitHub project. And here is the demonstration website. I'm piggybacking on Google's app engine. So here we got passfault.appspot.com. Notice I put the HTTPS because it's uh, um, you, this password does go over to the server on the back end. And that is probably the most frequent question I get, is what do we do with the passwords? Is it done locally? Um, there are some things we can do to analyze the password locally. We have a, an applet, and uh, we also want to do some more work to compile this down to JavaScript so it could all run locally that way. So if there's anybody out there, that has good experience with uh, Google's web toolkit. Um, I've been looking at it, and I'm not uh, kind of a novice on it, and I'd like some help in getting that this compiled to JavaScript. I think a lot of people would use this um, more if this were a JavaScript library. So here we got some examples. Um, here, let me increase the font so you can see this. Here's some weak passwords that pass typical policies. You've got your um, really long password that has uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and special characters. And yet this is weak because this is just a password pattern. So if you held down your hand over QWER and then held down the shift key and did it again, raise your hand up to the numbers and did 1, 2, 3, 4, held the shift key down and did 1, 2, 3, 4 again, really easy to remember. Um, like I mentioned before, we contract to the Department of Defense for all of the accounts that are not smart card enabled, they have their CAC cards, then they require a, a 16 character password. Well, hey, here's a 16 character password and it's probably the weakest ever. So this first time it'll an analyze, um, it takes a bit longer on App Engine because they um, heavily restrict your multi-threading access. So here you see the results. It says this password needs more strength. The number of pattern of passwords in this combined pattern is 8 billion, which sounds kind of big, but not with today's cracking and not with, uh, certainly not with old school type uh, password hashing. So here you'll see it found four patterns they're all horizontal keyboard patterns, and they give you a little bit of information of how much that pattern contributes to the overall strength of your password. And if you want some more detail on each pattern, you can hover over it and see, ah, uh, this was QWER. There's only 296 passwords in this pattern. Not very strong. And you may be wondering, how do I get 200? How do I go from 296? to billions. <laughs> and essentially what you have to do is these numbers are multiplied. So I have 286 or 96 
times 296 times 296 times 296. And that's where you come up with 8 billion. So at this point, I'm going to jump over to GitHub. So here's our GitHub. Come over to here. Here's your URL to clone. And when you come down to get, here is the project that you'd get. The core library is a Java library. Um, for those that uh, can't, don't want to uh, um, need access to this without uh, Java, I built this JSON service. And this JSON service is pretty much identical to that website I just showed you. So let's step into that. And I'm going to run it. I just upgraded to Gradle, and it's fantastic. I love the build system. I think this will help uh, people jump in, contribute. You'll also notice um, that there is an applet for this. So if you did want to run this locally, there is the build for the applet. They're all published um, out to um, um, Maven Central. So here it's running. We can come back over to our server. So if you don't want to send your passwords over to Google's App Engine, clone the repository, build it. You saw it wasn't all that difficult. The first time it'll take a while to download some uh, uh, the, the web container Jetty. It'll be on localhost 8080. Here we go. That will point you to the right location. So we'll go through the rest of these examples. Uh, going to localhost. You'll see it's a first time it takes to load. It uh, takes a second, but after that it's a lot quicker. So, and this isn't so much the network see as it is the multi-threading capability. Um, with a Google App Engine, they don't let you create and hold on to threads. So I have to create a whole bunch of threads on each request. So it's almost as fast as if I just analyze them sequentially. But that's a bit too much into the details. So let's come back. So here, another typical password that would pass your normal policy. You got a dictionary word, a number, a special character. Um, again, this would take less than a day to, to crack. The passwords in this pattern are 822 million. Uh, most of the strength comes from the dictionary word. One of the features that I'm working on that I was really hoping to demo today, but I didn't get it completely done, but it'll be in the next release, which should be up soon is you'll see a lot of the, the accuracy here depends on the word list. Some words are used a lot more frequently than, than others. So what we've done is I've got a frequency word list so that we have the most frequent words that end up being the smallest set of words um, will be first and give them the higher priority. So we'll be getting a lot better accuracy out of our password analysis in the next. So some passwords that typically fail your normal policies, like completely, I believe this is uh, 16 characters. And but the problem here is it has no special characters. It has no numbers. It has no uppercase. How can that possibly be secure? Well, that's a lot of patterns, uh, a lot of passwords in this pattern of uh, 16 completely random lowercase characters. So if we look at the detail here, you'll see that um, uh, it found Latin characters and that there were, it did not find any uppercase or numbers. And so it is smart enough to determine that if I were to put in some numbers, let's see if I 
took half of these out and just put in numbers, it's smart enough to realize that the numbers are all grouped together and we'll treat those as different passwords. Oh, I did horizontal bad habit. Okay, so I got to get a random number, not horizontal keyboard number. So here you'll see it determined two random characters, one that was all Latin characters and the others that was numbers. So that um, you'll see, even though it's about the same length, it lowered the strength of it. Another pass, uh, pattern that I think a lot of people would like to use are passphrases, but they can't because most password policies prevent that. So here you'll see we have a U.S. city in this password, Seattle, uh, a smaller uh, English word that comes from the tiny lower dictionary. Um, we have two of those and then a Spanish word. The total number of passwords in this pattern is one quintillion. I'm not exactly sure what a quintillion is. I had to look them all up in Wikipedia to get past a trillion. But, um, and, and I don't think our users will either. And so that's really where this two years, one month, is important. It's the, that estimated time to crack. So maybe we should talk some more about that. So here, under these show options, we've got crack hardware and password protection. So right now the default is Windows NT LAN Manager. If we wanted to upgrade that, so you say decrypt or WPA or Microsoft Windows NTLM2, um, I took um, all of the cracking speeds from Hashcat, one of the GPU cracking accelerator projects that I've been following. Um, so let's go to SHA-512. Let's say it's been hashed 100,000 times. And that would take on an average computer probably about a second to go through that many rounds of hashing. So it adds a lot of of latency. So let's reanalyze this. And same size of pattern, but you'll see it takes a lot more centuries to crack this. So that's on an everyday computer. And there I'm assuming that there's one GPU to use. So we have some other profiles of different types of hackers. And a dedicated cracker is what I'm calling a $5,000 machine which um, I'm assuming a GPU will cost around 1,000, so it's five GPUs. Organized Crime Cracker will have $50,000 of $1,000 GPU crackers. So let's go all the way up to a government cracker, which I assume they'll do $1,000 towards making the password cracker. Maybe I'm not giving them enough credit. Maybe I'm giving them too much credit. Who knows? So... That took down the trees from hundreds of centuries down to a decent number of centuries. If we change this back to, say, WPA hashing, which doesn't do as many rounds, it cuts it down to one century. If we were to go back to old school hashing, just one time, that cuts it down to four months, four and a half months. So even though that's a pretty good password, your password protection makes it um, weaker. And I think this is, ex oh, yeah, let's go to the password policy. This is exciting from the policy standpoint because your password policy now, instead of trying to guess how many uppercase, how many lowercase, how many repeated, how long do I want my password to be, you have this estimate of here. Um, you can tell your password policy how you protect it. Let's say you protect it with, uh, with 100,000 times of, of SHA-512. And when you're cracking your password, let's say you're a bank and you don't want China getting in, so you assume they have a really expensive password cracker. So password pattern size of 100, let's say we come out here, size of... 700 billion um, 
that password could be cracked in seven days. So that might not fit your risk. Let's say that in your risk analysis, let's say you assume that it'll take about a, you know, worst case, it takes a month to determine that your passwords got dumped from your database. So you want at least a month. You probably want another month for your users to be able to reset their passwords. So let's bump this up to two and a half months. Then your password policy is really five trillion patterns in their password. So the exciting thing about this is it's simple. It's really intuitive to see um, what your password policy is. I think it's, uh, there's a lot of power in simplicity. And so I'm excited um, to see, because I don't know if I want to get into uh, predicting the future on passwords, but people have predicted passwords dying for, gosh, several, almost two decades now. And it doesn't seem to be going away. I'm excited about all the other things. I love my cat card. I love my two-factor authentication on Google. But gosh, uh, passwords are here to stay for the foreseeable future. So I'm hoping to give um, some protection around it. So let's go back to the presentation. So here's kind of my marketing elevator pitch here. Um, I think we've got something that is more accurate, more simple, more informative, more powerful than what we've got. Um, so I'm going to zip through these. Oh, and password advice. You know, after spending all this time, is there any change? Um, I'd, I'd change this uh, 12 random characters. Actually, 12 random characters, I think, would be good. But 16 characters has become the, the length standard, really. Um, four random words are great. Misspelled words are really hard to enumerate. Uh, it really adds a lot of of entropy to your password. So I recommend it. So if you're a bad speller, that's finally good for you. You know, <laughs> It helps to be a bad speller when making passwords. OK, some of the things that we want to do next. Um, let me show you real quick this project. Let me check the time. Oh, so we got a uh, good time to to um, talk some more. Maybe now would be a good time to open up some questions, and then I could get to some um, what next after that. I should probably look over at my webinar and see if questions have already been posted. Okay, I'll come back and check that in a bit. And in the meantime, I'll show you some of the other stuff we've, uh, that we have. So we're kind of going to come out of the JSON service. I mentioned the applet. Um, the app engine project extends this JSON service. And the JSON service is really the, the, what I would say is the example to follow. Um, I could show you the code really quick. Here is the servlet itself. Uh, the analysis isn't all that complex. I've tried to hide all the, the, the details of, of complicated details that aren't really necessary to know. Um, so here we are collecting the password over a post. The password doesn't get put in headers. I have it in a secure string, which is um, just a byte array so that I can clear it, because Java has a tendency to hold on to strings. And uh, we don't want anyone to be able to dump the memory at Google and get these uh, passwords. So as soon as it's done analyzing, it'll clear out that password, clear out the memory. So here we get the password from the input stream. I don't have any. Uh, I don't use any of the extra features to parse parameters because I don't want them into strings again. So I just read it straight from the input stream. I build my finder. It's a composite finder because it's combining all of the different pattern finders into a multi-threaded finder. 
So I pass the password into this password analysis. The password analysis holds the result of the analysis. Here we analyze the password. We wait for that to complete because it is uh, non-blocking. And then all the results will be stored in this analysis thing. We write the analysis out in JSON so that any clients can use it. And then we're done. This JSON service has become kind of the example to follow. Here I have a little password form, the analyze button. Here, let me. So here you'll see this submit password. When that button is clicked, it will submit the password and look for the password ID. It'd be nice to pull this into a nice plugin. I think that's another no next step. The, um, so the submit password is fairly simple. Um, here you'll see my code for applets. So it will check to see if the applet is present. Well, here I just have a simple flag of, of applet equals false. If the applet is present, then it will call into that applet and analyze it. The applet also returns JSON, so I can use the same code. It's turned off right now because it had so many people wanting to be able to access the site over, um, you know, with their iPhone or tablet. So, here we make this AJAX request over post. Um, the URL here, when it comes back, we take the JSON that's sent back and we apply this template. Uh, so it just templates all of the JSON response into a web page and, and that's it. So I would like to make this um, a little easier to use if you're a web developer to make a, a nice JSON, uh, I'm sorry, a JavaScript plugin, probably a a jQuery plugin, but you'll see it's not that complex to, to get used, get using. Another thing that I'd be really excited to do as far as the next step, if you, um, I mentioned the GWT compiling the Java code into JavaScript, that would be, that would make it even easier for web developers to grab this and use it. And I love the idea of having this all analyzed on the client and not have to worry about it going over and uh, having someone grab your password. So let me have in the core, the core library, I have a built-in command line uh, interface. So if we say Java, it's built in the build libs passfault core. So if we run that command, oh my passfault thing got a little squished. That's all right. So we enter in a password. Let's say we um, enter in security, a keyboard pattern, and let's do a Elite. So that would be a seven. Let's put in a one here so we have elite speak. And then we get to pick what kind of uh, attack profile and protection profile we have. Let's say we got a, a high end government cracker. And let's say we've chosen to select uh, protect this with vcrypt. So here you'll find that it, oh, instead it found the numbers pattern because 1337 is smaller than a dictionary with lead substitution. So it found both of those patterns and it chose the random numbers instead because that was a smaller pattern. So if we were to enter that same thing again, security, And instead I had a, so I have a mix of real characters in with uh, uh, 
I'm typing and not talking. <laughs> okay. Oh, interesting. It's it's interesting to find the different patterns it finds. Sometimes it doesn't match the pattern that you used to create it because it found a weaker pattern. So what I was getting at with this command line is it's pretty basic. It's just kind of a proof of concept. I'd really like to get a command line that could plug into Linux. I'd love to have a Linux administrator just be able to grab this in there with their yum or RPM or whatever package management they're familiar with and have it come down, set a quick policy, probably have a reasonable policy by default. And then every time someone enters password to change your password, it would run this to um, to analyze the policy and enforce the policy, or analyze the password and enforce the policy. So if there are some Linux guys out there that could help me, um, I've done a little poking around. I know that uh, you'd probably tell me that I'd have to do something with the PAM module, and I'd probably respond with something like Pam yeah you should go talk to her that'd be great <laughs> so if you um, can help out there that would be great I would be excited another thing that I'm excited about are the words the word lists that plays a key role because the size of the dictionary is the size of the pattern so I want more uh, meaningful dictionaries so what I've done currently with the help of some students from the University of Florida, we put the, some passwords or um, word lists for first names, U.S. first names that came from the Social Security database, which is public domain. We also analyzed the last names from the U.S. Census and then organize them in the least frequently used and the most frequently used and, and group those into percentiles. So we have like 68 percentile and that's a really small list but it covers the most of the population so it would be the most likely to appear in the password. So those will have a smaller strength, uh, a smaller strength because they're more frequently used. We've also done the same thing with English words what we did is we used the closed captioning for movies. There's an open uh, project and somebody um, went and created a frequency list out of those. So we've pulled those in and that will be, all these will be in the next release, which I'm hoping to release in the next uh, week or so. However, there's not much um, I've done internationally. I've done some proof of concept things. We've got uh, um, a Russian keyboard to make sure that, that, that that's international. So another thing that people could do is they could um, create similar frequency lists for different uh, languages. Russian, um, we, we have a keyboard for it. We can put in keyboards for, for different locales also. So that'd be a great way to help if you're not too excited about getting into the code. Um, so I'm going to come back over and see if we have questions. I don't see any. Um, I'm, we are planning on rebroadcasting this um, later tonight. So if you have questions, you can send them my way. Um, I have a mailing list for this project that you can get from the website. Let's see, from the OWASP project uh, page for Passfault. Also here I have a list on the open source button. Oh, it looks like I lost my network. Oh, no, that's not true. This is my local page. Now, regardless, you get the idea. We have a mailing list, and or you can send a, an email straight to me. My OWASP email address is cam.morris at owasp.org. 
So you can send me questions there, and uh, I'm hoping that we can get some uh, real-world implementations. If you're excited about grabbing this and using this in your product, I'd love to talk to you and see how it goes. And um, uh, the goal is to get this towards a uh, stable release. And uh, I think we're getting there. We're getting close. So I think that is all I have to show. Okay. Thanks, Cam. Um, are there any questions from the audience for Cam? Uh, he did provide his contact information, so if you think of something later, feel free to reach out to him. And if you uh, joined us late, and know a couple of people did, um, that's fine. Uh, this webinar has been recorded and will be posted on the OWASP uh, YouTube channel, so you can uh, review it and read up and still reach out to Cam. So if there are no questions, um, I'd like to thank Cam for his time today. Um, I know this is a pretty exciting project and you're looking for some support, some input, some feedback, um, helping to get things moving. So um, if there are no other questions, then I guess that's it. Thanks for joining. Thank you.